What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and it's been six months since I picked up the Sony a7 IV. So, I wanted to do a kind of slightly longer term review and see if it's still good. I've been using the a7 IV mainly as a B camera, however I did take it to Norway traveling and I used it extensively for video and photo just to kind of put it through its paces. My initial review was objective for the most part, except for my overall opinion. This video is going to be almost entirely subjective and that's the beauty of these kind of videos is that, you know, you get lots of opinions based on experience. We'll go through general observations of using the a7 IV, have a look at my pros and cons from my initial review to see if they're still valid, and then just go through my lasting impression, things that I love, things that I don't. As ever, everything is timestamped here, you can just skip to the bit you want, no problem. So I now have a Patreon for this channel, it's completely non-profit, the idea being any funds from Patreon, I put back into the channel, I buy gear, review it, give it away to backers. It's really inexpensive to be a backer, just the cost of a cup of coffee, and it allows me to do the gear giveaways. In fact, so far I've given away stuff to the value of hundreds, so it's really good odds of winning something. Anyway, details down below. First off, I want to show you some of the footage from my trip to Norway. It did pretty well, I would say, but definitely helped by the epic scenery that you get everywhere you look in Norway. Everything you're about to see was shot handheld either with the Sony 20mm f1.8 or the Sigma 50mm f1.4. Here goes. So let's go over things that I've noticed about the a7 IV whilst using it. Firstly, the image. It's super detailed due to the 6K downscale, as you probably saw from the montage that I just played, and it, it has this almost kind of 3D quality. I can tell you it is significantly sharper looking than my Sony a7S III, which I'm shooting on right now and even that camera is sharp enough looking for me. However, the clips from the a7 IV are significantly slower to edit in Final Cut compared to the clips I get from the a7S III, and I'm not sure why that is. In theory, it should be identical, but it's not. I'm wondering whether it's something to do with the codec and the way it's displayed in Final Cut. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I'm drawing a blank. If you know the reason for this, 
definitely let us all know. The 1.5 times crop APS-C mode is really useful. However, I find the quality to be marginally lower and I'm not even sure what it is I'm seeing. There's just something about it that doesn't quite look as good. And have you experienced this as well? It could be that in theory, the dynamic range shouldn't be quite as good and that's what I'm seeing, but uh, who knows? The low light performance is pretty damn good, but it's still no Sony a7S III. Kel surprise, right? I mentioned this in my initial review and there were people saying, yes, but the a7 IV will be better between ISO 5000 and 10,000. But for the way that I shoot with the a7S III, if you really are shooting in low light, proper low light, I'm gonna be skipping ISO 5000 to 10,000 anyway and going straight to 12,800 where that dual native ISO kicks in and it becomes so clean. After all, it's only a couple of stops difference. One interesting thing that I noticed is I haven't really noticed rolling shutter. When I tested the rolling shutter for my review, it didn't fare that well. But, you know, running around, grabbing clips, handheld, you know, doing both photography and videography for traveling and some paid jobs, I didn't notice it. So I'd say whilst the A7S III and FX3 are gonna be far better for rolling shutter, I would say for most people, it shouldn't be a concern on the A7 IV. It hasn't overheated on me since I switched over to the high temperature warning mode. I filmed in the heat, plus 35 degrees. I've filmed for longer durations on a couple of occasions for over two hours at a time and nothing. I have heard that people are still getting overheating problems with this camera, but not for me. I am curious if any of you watching have had this and if so, what were the conditions? definitely let me know in the comments. Now let's check out a little bit more of that gorgeous Norway footage. So next I wanted to review my pros and cons from my initial review to see whether they're still valid. 
let's do it. So looking at my pros and cons, and I had huge appreciation for the autofocus system. Obviously that hasn't changed. I still think it's fantastic. I really liked the new tools that Sony added, such as the focus map function. But in my review, I suspected that I would never use it. And big surprise, I haven't used it since. I really liked the breathing compensation then. I love it even more now. It's a really big deal. I think video guys should be loving this. When you first try out the a7 IV, it's hard not to be impressed by the image. However, there were one or two occasions where it felt a little too on the sharp side, and I have noticed weird bits of moire here and there. I liked the new video stills S&Q switch when I first tried it, and then fell in love with it when I was going around doing sort of hybrid shooting. It just makes workflow extra fast. And then the cons, and I talked about the heat issues ad nauseum during my review, and I may have to remove it from the cons list, but more on that in just a minute. The colour I have always found slightly on the green side, I'm sticking with this being a con. It's not bad in any way, and one really nice thing is it does match fairly easily to my A7S III footage. I'm still not happy with the 4K60 crop, and I know it's a necessary thing. I'm leaving it on my cons list, and I'm actually going to add the higher frame rate modes in general, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Here's the surprise, the rolling shutter I'm actually going to remove from my cons list. And you know why I already talked about this? When you're shooting in the real world, the rolling shutter is really not noticeable. That is unless whip pans become cool again. And if that happens, well, I'll eat my words. And finally, the EVF in video mode. It was awful when I tested it. It's still awful. I can't stand it. It might be the worst thing about the a7 IV. Sony, how on earth did this make it through to the final production model? I want to just round things up by going through my lasting impression of the a7 IV. And I'm going to start with the things that I love about it. Firstly, a very practical point, I love how well the footage matches the footage from my A camera, the Sony a7S III, generally speaking, apart from one thing which I'll talk about in a minute. The a7 IV might be the easiest Sony camera to use ever, that I've tried anyway, and I've used most of them. The menus are better than ever, you get that true hybrid workflow and it gives good results from the video and stills. It's also easier to grade the footage compared to its predecessor, the a7 III, due to improved color silence and 10-bit codec. Sony are learning to give customers great features in a package that gets out of your way and lets you just create. It's still not perfect and I still think Sony lag behind Canon and Panasonic in the whole getting out of the way department, but it's getting there. And then things that I don't love. I mentioned that the a7 IV and a7S III footage matches well, and it does for the most part, but the a7 IV without fail gives you slightly more green looking footage, the a7S III slightly more magenta. This is the case regardless of your white balance settings, it's an easy tweak to make when colour correcting of course, but worth acknowledging. It's just a step I'd rather avoid and it's yet another reason why filmmakers prefer using multiples of the same camera model. I also mentioned that the footage looks very sharp and sometimes it's so sharp that you can get weird moire. This is due to the downscaling of a 6k signal to 4k and not having an anti-aliasing filter. And just to know, I never get this on the a7S III. I find that the 50 or 60p footage just doesn't look that great to me. Even when using frame blending or optical flow in Final Cut, the motion is still just not very smooth. Speaking of the 50 and 60p modes, the 1.5x crop is still irritating. This and my previous point are enough for me to stop and consider whether I'm going to need to shoot higher frame rates for a job, and if the answer is yes, then there's no way I'm going to be using the a7 IV. There's some advice, if you're into slow-mo, don't get the a7 IV. I'm growing to like the sensor stabilisation on these cameras less and less. Don't get me wrong, in most situations it's better than without it, but I found on occasion you can get the touch of that stabilisation wobble in the corners, and with certain lenses the IBIS can be seemingly off and then we'll snap on. The sensor stabilization from Panasonic is probably the best I've seen, and I'd say Sony have got a little catching up to do. I know I said I've not had overheating issues, but dear God, the body gets hot, which is kind of disconcerting. It doesn't affect anything performance-wise, it just makes me uncomfortable. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I wanna hear from you. What's your experience been like with the a7 IV? similar to mine. I'd love to know your thoughts and comments in the section below. Please share, please help each other. That's what this channel has always been about. I've now made hundreds of videos about audio and videography on this channel, of which YouTube has picked this video for you to watch next, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.